great to be with everybody again. So this is going to be a brief video talking about the testing itself, how reliable, dependable it is, what is sensitivity and specificity. We've been, been a lot of field, questions have been fielded to us through social media, and um, the, a lot of the questions right now are revolving around this. How do I interpret my test results once I get them, and what do they actually mean in relationship to if I had disease, can I get infected again, etc. So. Please keep on putting these questions out there. We may end up doing a live question and answer solely around um, the testing itself, reliability, prevalence data, et cetera. These are very statistical mathematical concepts. And so it's kind of hard for some people to wrap their brains around it. So maybe doing a question and answer where I answer the same questions in different ways might be helpful as well for a lot of people to just grasp better what sensitivity, specificity, true positives, false positives, what these things actually mean. So this is, this is going to be a brief overview. Um, and maybe start putting those questions, fielding those questions, and we can collect them and then do a live Q&A and just answer some of the questions around the testing itself. I feel like this is going to be the next big topic. Reason being is in the Richmond area, um, in the last week, two of the ma major lab vendors, LabCorp, Quest just released antibody testing to the general practitioners. Most aren't doing it, some are doing it, but this is gonna be a bigger topic as people have the availability to test themselves. So um, with COVID-19 testing, first, what are we actually testing, what are we looking for? Well, there's two major tests. One's the RT, reverse transcriptase, PCR, that's looking for parts of the virus, viral RNA. Um, what we know from that test is depending on um, when you do the test, if you do it on day one to three of the illness, it's pretty accurate, over 90% accurate, but people are being told to shelter in place. So you're probably not gonna get a lot of people earlier on in illness, especially since it can take about six days for people to have significant symptoms and six to seven days before they feel like they need to present. Um, at day, about day six, interesting enough, the accuracy drops to less than 80%. And by day 14, the accuracy is less than 50%. So with the PCR test, you have to have someone who's sick and you have to be, get them in a certain stage of the illness. As well, it depends on where the sample comes from. If someone has disease, the um, going and getting lung samples is the most accurate. It gets about 95% um, accuracy. The problem is that's usually a hospitalized patient. It's usually someone who's sick and they're sticking a tube down your nose to get lung samples. Uh, the spit, it's about 72% sensitive um, as compared to the oral pharyngeal swabs um, they're much better, but they the oral is not as good as the nasal. But again, it depends on when you actually get that that test done. The antibody testing, there's different kinds of antibody testing. There's IgG, IgM, and IgA, and these are basically looking for the IgG are looking for different parts of the of the virus. There are ones to the spike proteins and different parts of the spike proteins, which are those little spiky things that actually attach to cell walls. And there's parts of the receptor that actually bonds to the ACE2. So, and then there's the IgM, which tells you, you know, is this acute versus um, not acute? And IgA looks more at your um, body's mucosal membranes, GI tract um, um, reaction to the infection. And that's what most stuff is revolving around is the antibody testing and specifically an IgG, just a single IgG, which, which is what most tests are currently. There are a few places offering more advanced testing, the full spectrum. But um, I do not know of anybody in Central Virginia. I only know one person in the country personally that's doing that, and they're out in the um, Colorado area. So with these tests, we have to think about when we get the results back, what does sensitivity versus specificity mean? So when I tell you if you, te you get your test done um, for the COVID-19 and your sensitivity is 87%, what does that mean? Well, sensitivity is basically is this it's the true positive rate if i say it's 87 percent sensitive that means 80 percent of the time if you have disease it actually tests positive which means 13 percent of the time if you if you actually have disease it tests negative so that's the thing you have to think about it's a 13 percent false positive rate um, with this test that's sensitivity specificity is a true negative rate if you don't have disease, what are the odds that the test will test negative, um, true negative? Now, the thing about it, and, and, and the, the, the thoughts are, it's what percentage of healthy people are correctly identified as not having the disease? That's your specificity. Sensitivity, what percentage of actually sick people will be identified as sick? 
Now, the thing about this testing, a couple things. One is a big range. The range for sensitivity or actual true positives range 67 to 93%. And the actual specificity or true negatives ranges 93 to 100%. Now, why, are the, why do you see these big ranges on, a, on an antibody test? And the basic thing revolves around prevalence. How many people actually have this infection? If you go into a population of a million people and there's been no recorded, reported cases there at all, and you do the test and the test is negative, the specificity, you know, odds are you don't have disease because it's a pretty low in, um, prevalence disease. Um, no one has it, basically. And the test was negative. If your test was positive, you would probably think, hmm, does this person really have disease? Because it's pretty rare. So you can come back to this number and go, oh, the sensitivity is 87%. Well, maybe I'm the 13% that are um, falsely positive. So to interpret this testing, you actually clinically need to know, you know, what is going on in the area, how many people actually have had disease. And that's why it's important for testing regimens pop-up testing centers to help get us some more accurate information. And that's one thing I think people are struggling with. You know, if you're in New York City and 22% of people, which is what we think now, um, have already had this, you know, the odds of a positive test being truly positive is going to be up. So it's probably going to range close to that 93% um, sensitivity. And if you're in some rural area where, you know, no one's had disease and you're positive, um, maybe, the, maybe the sensitivity is closer to that 67%. And that's a pretty big range of variance between you know two-thirds accuracy versus you know seven percent so that's where actually knowing what's going on that's the reason why i said before that this test is probably best for surveillance to figure out how many people have um disease in the area not actual diagnosis because there's just such a big range of variance the other thing about it is that's where clinical acumen come in the practitioner you're talking with you know um, which you should be hopefully interpreting these tests with your own personal provider if if you had no symptoms whatsoever, you're ne around no one at all with disease, um, and this test comes back negative, you know, do, do you believe that? Well, probably, yeah, because, you know, you weren't around anybody. Uh, and that's also the problem. If it came back positive, you wouldn't really know how to interpret that if you don't know the local data. And that's where in Virginia, because we don't know prevalence data as of yet, at least nothing's been reported that I've heard from our Department of Health, it becomes a little tricky with this data. And so that's the reason why when we see patients, we're saying, hey, were you sick in January? Because there are a lot of people having weird illnesses in January. I personally believe this was here in Virginia, January, December timeframe, because we're seeing lots of patients with weird viral infections, bronchitis that weren't getting better for four to six weeks, weird presentations, weird emissions from viral pneumonias. Now that we know this was actually in the United States and the first death was beginning of February, that means the first infectious cases were probably here in, Virginia, in the United States in late um, December. So um, knowing the data is important. Having someone help you interpret the data is very important as well. Um, we've been using, I've been seeing patients who've had family members sick, who had classic COVID-19 symptoms. They had a little cold and their antibody testing is coming back positive. So I'm believing that because they're fitting a clinical, a clinical scenario. I've also had patients who've had classic symptoms of COVID-19 and they've had positive siblings um, have the test, their test was negative. So do I believe that? Well, no, because their siblings, their people in the same house had the classic stuff, test was positive. In that case, I think their test is falsely negative. And that's where using this test to determine if we can go back safely into um, the workplace might not be the best use of it because it's not super accurate. So hopefully that was helpful. Yeah, hopefully this also has spurred some more questions Post those below, and hopefully we can kind of bring them together and have a more robust Q&A session for all those who are interested in getting a little deeper in this, because I feel like this is going to be a big topic as we go forward. If you feel like this was helpful, like us, follow us, um, share us with friends. That's where we get this kind of information out there is with you sharing it. If you feel it's useful and helpful, um, continue to follow us on social media. Um, we have lots of educational resources on our website as well. Uh, check us out there. And be safe, be healthy, be well. Find some good resources of information, stick with them, be calm, and we will get those together. Um, have a great day and take care.